Okay, so I see a lot of questions getting asked about how uh, the wiring works on the headlights. So this is a G-body, this is a cutlass. Um, I just am in the process or just finished installing um, some aftermarket headlights because these ones are cracked and I didn't want to spend a bunch of money on replacing them with equally bad uh, sealed beams. So these are a little better for light output. Anyways, uh, this is your low beam. Uh, this has a three-prong connector. This is your high beam. This is a two-prong connector, okay? Um, I have hacked up my wiring harness. Uh, this looks really bad because it's not loomed and it's not, and it's full of spade connectors right now and it's not zip tied away. Um, I had to wire in daytime running lights, which this vehicle didn't have, blah, 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 whatever. The point is the plugs. Okay, so this is your vehicle side of your low beam plug. This will plug into your three prong low beam, okay? I have had to depin this and move them around. So I think if I'm not mistaken, um, by default, the green wire was on the top middle here and basically everything had to move. And the tan was over here and the black was here, something like that. Anyways, um, to depin these, you use a depinning tool, which is just a flat, it's a really flat uh, piece of metal. You're gonna stick it in. See that little indentation above it? You're going to be sticking um, in while angled upwards and then pressing down to relieve the tab to uh, pull this out. If I had another hand, I would show it to you here as well. But you can see the on the insides of this plug and this plug, this is your high beam plug. I had to cut that off. It's basically just replaced with spade connectors at this point um, because three prong low beam, but this is also three prong because it can function as a low beam as well. So I've retained, uh, like all four will come on as low beams, two on this side, two on this side, and then all four will come on as high beams. Um, there's also switchbacks and DRLs and all that stuff and they all act together. So this is your factory plug for your high beam. Okay. It'll be the same on both sides, same wire colors. Green is high beam positive. Black is negative. It's your permanent ground. Okay. On Remember I said I depinned this so the order is different or that the placement is different, but on this it's very simple, okay? Your black wire is your ground. Your green is your high beam and your tan is your low beam, okay? Um, the reason this looks a little more complicated on the driver's side is because the way it wires is it comes from the wiring harness and then it goes into the plug and then out of the plug to go to the other light. So that light, for example, will have not as many plugs not like dual tan ones and all that stuff. Um, so just for anyone who's curious about the wiring, that's your, that's your wiring color that you have to keep straight. Now to install these uh, aftermarket cheap Amazon uh, lights, you need to keep in mind a couple things. They will always come with triple prong connectors. Um, let me see if I have one out. No, I threw it away. I threw away the connectors that I snipped off. They're going to come with this. You should mark on them, uh, what the manufacturer says, um, is the correct pinout. So on this side was high, this was low, and that was negative, right? So that's, so you then have to make your connector meet that unless you want to cut off the pigtail from your light, which I did on the high beam. High beam came with this, obviously there's really no difference between the lights from the manufacturer. High beam came with this plug as well. I only had this plug and I didn't have access to a junkyard when I was trying to wire these in to go and snip off some pigtails, which you could have. So the other solution is to go find another old Chevy or anything that uses these four by six headlights and just snip off some pigtails. Uh, it's in invaluable. I would. Definitely keeps them on hand if I thought ahead. Um, so I had to repin this side, the vehicle side, to match the light side of my low beams, okay? The low beams also came with um, DRLs and switchbacks. So DRL was their red wire. I'm trying to focus on there. And switchback was their yellow wire right there, okay? So what that means is you want to wire this to a thing that is whenever you want your DRLs to be on. If you don't want your 
little halo ring to come on for a daytime running light, then do not hook up this to any sort of power, this red one, okay? Yellow one, I tapped into the wire for this signal light, not that signal light, okay? These alternate. So this comes on, it comes on for about, let's say two thirds of a second, or yeah, about two thirds of a second. When it turns off for one third of a second, this one turns on for that one third of a second. This then turns off after a third of a second, and this one turns on for two thirds of a second. I noticed it wasn't even. Um, I wanted these to light up with this. Um, there's also some technical stuff where you don't, the switchbacks will sometimes act weird if the, the pulse of the signal light is off more than it's on, you can sometimes run the risk of the switchback turning back to the daytime running light. So you kind of want it to be on more. That's kind of just technical details, but it's tapped into the wire. Uh, these run, these pull so much power that I didn't run a relay. I just tapped power from here to power these two switchbacks and tap power from the other side to power those two switchbacks. And it runs, it works no problem because these are such low uh, power draw. So that is the yellow wire. Okay, and then for here, like I said, all you're doing is depinning your factory low beam connector to match the aftermarket three prong connector. Okay, now the the high beam was a little more complicated, and I just decided to do everything with spade connectors for now. Uh, I may pull some connectors from the junkyard and redo this because it's not that hard. So I cut this plug off of my daytime, of my, sorry, of my high beam, okay? It revealed the two wires we already knew, plus three more, as we expected, because there's three plugs. Those wires were um, on this side. It's really hard to see because I don't have a lot of room. Let me see if I can get that, the wire color showing here. So inside that thing I cut, there was a black wire right here. It's got some green shrink uh, heat shrink on it there was a blue wire and there was a white wire okay black is your ground i know it looks green because that's the heat shrink but where my finger is it's a black wire i'm really trying to get it to focus but it's not playing nice black wire right there you have a blue wire that is low beam and you have a white wire that's high beam Okay, that's from your headlight. Now those colors might change depending on which, which aftermarket um, headlight you buy, but just like if, you, if you're at the point where you're cutting the plug, you can probably run a 12 volt source to each and just figure out what your wire color is. And then it's very simple from there. <clears throat> the signal light that, I, or the, the daytime running light that I mentioned before, it's just double spliced. Yes, all of these are soldered. They're not just twisted. So it's done done pretty safely. But anyways, uh, so this splits my LED light, my daytime running light, into two. One goes to one, one goes to the other light. Done. Same with the signal. The signal's just split from the one down there that I pointed out in the bumper. It's just split into two. And one goes here, one goes to the high beam. Um, from there, uh, this plug... For your factory high beam already had a negative and a positive. So I just put spade connectors on the vehicle end of each of these and ran those to the headlight. The only last thing is low beam. Now I'm pretty sure that uh, two LED low beams from modern four by six replacements pull less amps than this high beam that was designed in the 50s or 60s. So I felt pretty comfortable simply taking my tan low beam wire and splicing it right here and running another low beam to my high beam, my daytime run, my my inside thing. So then I'm running yeah, basically five wires per light uh, on this 
original high beam. It's all five spade connectors because I chopped off the plug. On the standard low beam, it's one three prong plug that was depinned and repinned, and then two spade connectors. Um, the last thing I should mention is how I powered daytime running lights. So uh, I've replaced uh, in the past. So this is a this is a, um, a new wiper motor that's electric, I believe, or a windshield washer pump that's electric. I don't quite remember. All I did was solder in and tap the positive, um, which was actually labeled on this as being white, which is great. Uh, I also tested that to confirm. And then I ran that ever so discreetly to a relay. So, and then I labeled my relay. So I'm not using the middle. You can see that red is snipped. That's the, like the always closed um, circuit. You don't need that on a five pin. You don't need that. You don't need the fifth pin on a five pin relay for this. You can just have it function as a four pin relay. I just labeled the relay so I know um, how to wire up my plugs when I'm just looking at it. Um, out of the relay, this blue wire ends up getting spliced into a, a wire that I ran and it goes to the battery and that's that yellow cable you see there. Just focusing on that. That's the yellow cable you see there. Um, connecting to the positive, the permanent positive on the battery. Um, Sucks so the battery. Um, this black wire here is ground and that just connects right there to an existing ground point. Um, out is the yellow wire out of the, out of here. That wire basically goes down to here, splits into two. One of them goes to this set of lights. The other one runs across and goes to that set of lights. From there, it splits again and it powers the daytime running lights. That's my output. And then my switch, uh, sorry, accessory right here. This white coming out of the, um, coming out of the relay is what connects to this, that connects to here. So as soon as this sees power, the daytime running lights, this relay will trip and the daytime running lights will come on. Um, that is as soon as the key gets to the on position. Uh, it won't turn it on with just um, like your basic, like one click of the key, it's two clicks where it sits when it runs. Um, I know the wiring looks really bad, I promise. I do kind of know what I'm doing with the 12 volt wiring. Uh, I just haven't had a chance to clean it up and I wanted to make a video to sort of show the wiring process. I know a lot of people are confused when they pull this off and they're expecting a three prong plug on the high beam. Uh, but uh, the reason uh, there's a two prong plug in this one is because this is only a, like a single element. There's only one light in your high beam and it's on or off. Uh, technically in this low beam, there's two. There's two filaments that can run. It's hard to show, but you can see that there's three holes in the back of the light corresponding to one hole, two hole, three hole. And so there's two filaments. I think it's only one bulb from what it looks like. It looks like one halogen bulb, but there's two filaments in there. So that's why you have two positives and one negative. But these aftermarket ones do, do not differentiate. It's not, like, it's not like it comes with two high beams and two low beams. It comes with four identical lights. So that's why you have to wire it up in that certain way. I hope this wasn't too long. If you have any questions, let me know. I know I kind of rambled on there and talked about stuff that didn't, maybe didn't need to be explained, uh, but there are new people who have never seen sealed beam headlights. I, I mean, I'm in the same position with carburetors. I, the only thing I own with a carburetor is like a pressure washer and some, and some lawn tractors. Uh, I've never had a carburetor on a vehicle. So like this is like a magic black box to me. And I'm sure for some people, 12 volt wiring is like a magic black box for them. So I just wanted to try to explain it as, as clearly as possible. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Take care.